there. I don't know what that is. Is that one right there, actually? Where? I think you may have found it. I'm Jesse Wyland, and me and my team of fellow Rocky Mountain Park Rangers have worked with wildlife from the depths of the South Pacific to the peaks of the Rocky Mountains. And now, I'm on a quest to uncover the world's most captivating wildlife research and bring it to you. On this episode, we're headed down south, along the Colorado River, into the heart of Texas, Austin. This bohemian center and outdoor playground attracts young people from all over the country and is now one of the fastest growing cities in America. But with increased population comes increased pressure on the natural resources and the wildlife that calls it home. Scientists at the University of Texas have recently discovered a new underground species of salamander with no eyes and translucent skin. This week's mission is to head out to the springs of underground lakes and caves and find this new species of salamander to gain a better understanding of these cryptic creatures and the mysterious world they inhabit. Found nowhere else in the world and difficult to study due to the inaccessibility of their underground habitats, these salamanders represent a kind of mystery and rare beauty, a legacy of wildness that lives on despite a rapidly changing landscape. There's a whole underground ecosystem here that many people don't even know about, and within it, an endemic species found nowhere else on Earth. The next morning, we go to meet up with Ruben Tovar, whose research is centered around the Texas blind salamanders. Yeah, Ruben, do you just want to like tell us a little bit about the salamander? Just point some things out, maybe? Right, yeah. um, so, sure, absolutely. So this is a uh, salamander um, from a cave called Preserve Cave, found here in Central Texas. They're endemic uh, salamanders here in Central Texas, and they're associated with the Edwards Plateau, which is this unique geological uplifting, composed of the, and it's composed of the carbonate rock limestone. Um, so after millions of years of erosion, this limestone has created a number of microhabitats, including uh, deep aquifers, springs, and caves. And so uh, these salamanders have managed to uh, occupy each one of these habitats. Um, and so in doing so, they have, uh, it's resulted in their, the evolution of um, these salamanders having um, reduced eyes. There's one individual that uh, described the eye histology of the Texas blind salamander. He published it in the year 1900. Um, and so this is the only thing that was known about eye histology. They're not um, there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. These salamanders are so enigmatic because they live in places that we can't really get to very easily. Caves and underground aquifers are the planet's kind of last frontier, right? I mean, I think we know more about the deep ocean than we do about, about some of these right. aquifers. What's interesting about these guys as well is that they are considered pedomorphic. Pedomorphism uh, simply means that um, these individuals are, uh, retain a, a juvenile state. Um, while reach, while at the same time reaching sexual maturity. So they're keeping their juvenile tendencies as they reach sexual maturity. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Respiration okay. happens happens through their skin and skin. through their gills. Okay. So yeah, they they um, that's how they pretty much breathe. That's how yeah. So this is why they're also really sensitive to changes in in water quality. And this is a three-dimensional, 3D rendering of, of this salamander. So it looks like they have pretty muscular heads from that first picture I saw, yeah. which, I mean, yeah, when you kind of look at the picture of it, it doesn't look like, I don't know, it kind of looks like a very fun, friendly, cute yeah. salamander. Yeah. But I guess, are those just huge muscles on its side so it can just be the mm -hmm. top predator in its ecosystem? Uh, okay. it, right, so the, the way that these salamanders eat, they create a suction. Uh, the muscles are to chew on things, but it's also to make this rapid motion in kind of suck it in, in real yep. quick. Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, look at this. This looks out of a sci-fi movie or something. That is <laughs> yeah. what nightmares are made of. <laughs> That's crazy. Now that we know what we're looking for, we're headed back out into the field. So today we're gonna go meet up with Professor Tom Devitt of University of Texas. His team just discovered a new species of salamander and we're gonna go meet up with them and see if we can find them again. If we are lucky enough to find it, Tom and his team are gonna take the salamander back to the lab uh, to run DNA testing on it to help them further describe the new species. Hey Tom, how's it going? Hey Jesse, how's it going man? Pretty good. 
Tell us a little bit about where we are today. Yeah, this is the uh, Martin Tract of the Balcones Canyonlands Preserve. Um, the preserve was created back in 1996, mainly to protect two endangered songbirds and six endangered car invertebrates. But because the golden cheek warbler, this songbird, uh, lives in the Canyonlands, it naturally provides a little bit of protection for these salamanders as well. All right, so we're here today with Tom Devitt in the Balcone Canyonlands Preserve. We're gonna be uh, looking for some salamanders in the spring right here. Uh, let's get down to it. So these are groundwater salamanders that um, live in groundwater environments. Obviously this is all spring water that's um, uh, coming out of the, the rock here. And these salamanders live sort of in and among leaves and under rocks. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna see if we can find one today. Am I basically just moving these leaves as gingerly as possible, yeah, or just to avoid stirring up the okay? Is the main deal. You can really spend the whole day here. Yeah. And this small—it's it's not a big stream. I mean, it's, it's, not, but it's, it's yeah, 50, just, 50 feet or something. But you can see how it's, yeah, it takes it takes time. To yeah. Go through it thoroughly. Yeah, every leaf. So I have some friends that are just obsessed with herpetology. Uh huh. Can you describe what it is that really draws people into it and to kind of just get addicted to it? I just had a passion for these animals. It's like I want to know what it's like, you know, to be these these organisms, and and uh, I've just always found them um, appealing because you can, you know, you can get them in your hand and look at them up close. Right, right, right there. I don't know what that is. Is that one right there actually? Where? It just went under here, under that leaf. This one right here? Yeah. I think you may have found it. Alright. Let's see. Yep. Alright. <laughs> nice. Got it. <laughs> Way to show me up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this the species that was just discovered or it's been known? For a while, that it's probably a new species, but now we have, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty certain. So um, now we're gonna put a name on it. Great. Any names in mind? Yeah, share it because it's uh, uh, sensitive yeah. information. Yeah. Top secret. Oh. Nice. nice. It's like he's a professional or something. Yeah. It's a good spot, man. You saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have found him if you hadn't seen him. But... You know, beginner's luck. And just like that, we found a new species of salamander. And you know what finding a new species means. It's time to hit the town and celebrate. The next morning, it's time to take the new sample back to the lab with Ruben to further analyze and run DNA testing. This discovery allowed me to go face to face with a new creature, an animal that has developed its own set of characteristics for survival, showing us just how life has to adapt to survive. The need for continued research and conservation is due to the salamanders' unique adaptations and ecosystem services they provide. These salamanders, as well as many amphibians, actually indicate the health of our ecosystem here in Central Texas and aquifers all over the world. Texas is experiencing, you know, huge population growth, and uh, the demands on water are just, you know, increasing um, over time. And so, what that creates for animals that live in the aquifer is habitat loss. So that's kind of the, the urgency of it. By protecting these animals and the ecosystems they live in, we are ensuring our own future. <laughs>